Hello, and welcome to the RPGTO map making tutorial for DMs. Now, the first thing you're really going to want to go do is go to the campaign manager and make a new session so that you can follow along. There are a lot of tools that are DM only, and so you won't see them on the screen until you actually make your own session. I'm going to delete this one. You're going to want to launch yours. I'm going to delete mine just because I'm already in a session. Okay, so since this is a map making tutorial, let's go ahead and make a new map. Please remember, when you see things that I have, one, I've been making maps for a long time. Two, I have a huge selection of things because I am a subscriber. It'll be up to you to decide what you need and what you don't need. Um, and I have a friend who's been running the games for a year and has never needed any of the subscriber functions. So it's up to you what you want. So first things first, let's go ahead and make a new map. Now I always minimize the die roller. Way over there on the right hand side you're going to see the die roller. It's shrunk just to give me more room to, sh to see the actual tiles. So nice blank map. Let's go ahead and use the dungeon tiles because those come free to every user. The way you do this is to choose the tile you want, left click on it, and then drag it right on over to the map. Um, say you want a nice handy fireball trap, go ahead and put your fireball right there where you want it. Then make a little note to yourself because a trap isn't a trap if the players can see it. So make a little note to yourself where you put it, fireball trap, and there it is. Then you right click on that tile and you're going to want to move the tile to the back. Once you do that, it is completely hidden. No spoilers for your party. And there you have it. Always make sure you put your map note right exactly on where you want that to click on it so that you can do your reveal. Now, map notes are also by default private and that's shown in the blue. Let's go ahead and add a few more features to our map. Um, this is very, very handy for doorways. So we put our doorway, and when the party opens it, open doorway. But until the party opens it, that door is closed. And so you have a closed door, and when they open it, you can move that tile to the back, and magically the door opens. Remember that you can only manipulate the map when you're in map mode. So if you're in PC journal tab, you can't change it. Let's go ahead and go to the drawing tools. First click on the drawing tools at the top and then you have your different options available to you. And let's go ahead and show you how to use the different tools. Uh, grid snap, no, that's straight line draw. Now the difference between straight line draws is it's going to draw a straight line from point A to point B. Grid snap actually puts it right on the grid itself. Um, there is an exception to that. If you end exactly in the middle of a grid, then it will end and give you a very nice line that's very, very handy actually to use to show which direction stairs go. And you see me right here ending it right in the middle of a line. Nice straight line that very much gives you that progression for a stairway. I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick because a friend showed me that trick. And I use it on all my stairs now. And this way they don't have to ask, the party doesn't have to ask you, does it go up or down? Now here's also another quick trick. When you want to rotate the tile, you can right click on it and then choose the rotate tile selection. Or you can left click on it and then clicking on your right mouse button will rotate the tile. So that way you can spin it in you know, three fourths of a circle in half a second, no problems. And here, here you see where we're erasing. You can erase three ways by choosing the little eraser, which erases a small section by using rectangle erase where it will erase a large section or you can go up to map and you can scroll down and choose clear all drawing. Make sure that's exactly what you want to do because it will erase it off the entire map. 
Now let's go ahead and just add a few more fun features to our map. You can make beautifully detailed maps. You can make very, very simple maps. I have a ton of them for all sorts of different occasions and I've used them for everything. Again, quick, easy, hold it down the left mouse button and right click on it and you can turn it any way you want to. You can also make the alcoves very, very nice, very, very sharp just by adding one little one by one. You see where I moved the tile to the front because I wanted the staircase there and nice sharp edge. Let's go ahead and just do a little cleanup on this map more to show you what all you can do. We're not going to finish this map today at all. I don't think I don't think that would be helpful for you at all. Get seamless and detailed as you want it to be. Or as simple. Not every map needs to be, you know, a monstrosity. I just tend to make monstrosities and I freely admit that. And once again, rotate your tiles by holding down the left click button and right clicking on it. And you can rotate it as quickly as you need to. We're going to go ahead and uh, watch me make a little bit more room. Mostly because I can't help myself. You think I love map making uh, just by seeing the sheer number of maps I have and the complexity of the maps I have actually. And that reminds me. There's a lot of things that you want to do for yourself. You want to give your maps good names so that you can remember what it is afterwards. When you only have three maps, this is not a problem. When you have 50 plus, this can be a little bit of a problem. Um, you're also going to want to um, usually make it invisible so that you can reveal it in the way you want it and that's done by going up to the map tool make map invisible I'm switching over maps so that you can see one of my more complex ones to show you just how much you can do um, you can make really really huge maps you can layer them very very detailed and you can also reveal them as you need to. Um, this is my library. Until you see how many maps and tiles and that you can layer, it really kind of comes to life for you just what you can do. Um, you can drag your map around by right clicking on it and just dragging it the entire map around. Now here's I just need the library. I can just expose the library players don't get distracted by the tavern. And we know how many players get distracted by a tavern. And the library is, is an example of a very highly layered map. As I said, you can make your maps as large or as small, as detailed or as complex as you have tiles for. Now you can make an image into a map. Um, that is a multi-step process and tends to lag the table out uh, for some players, if not all of your players. So that's going to be something that you're going to want to decide for yourself if you want to use. Again, you can have map notes all over the place. You can describe you know, different aspects of the library. You can put notes to yourself about the NPCs and their descriptions. You can put that in journal entries also, but as a map note, um, it's very, very quick and easily accessible. Um, but limited in application. After all, if you import the map for a completely different campaign, then your map notes for NPCs no longer apply. Here, I've gone ahead and made a couple of notes. One private, two public. Let's go ahead and zoom in so that you can very, very clearly see those. And you'll see that the private notes are in blue, the public notes are in gold. Your players can easily see them. And for layering with that round table, which surrounded by chairs for your Knights of the Round Table, 
you will have no idea until you try it just how much trouble that sort of layering is. And I do recommend you try it because there's a lot of things you can do. Okay. Another thing you're going to want to do for yourself is to export your map clean. And by clean, I mean no tokens on it. Um, here I'm just showing you a little bit of the layering. Now, if you export a map with tokens on it, it's going to come imported with tokens on it. Here's an example of a map that I keep just to show you this example. They exported it with tokens on it, so when it comes in right in the middle of my game, it's imported with tokens on it. And me, I have absolutely got to delete those. Your party's going to want them deleted anyway because your leader wants to see at a glance who he needs to heal. Now this map is also a nice example because it comes with an image on it. Here they Im you do can use images, they just tend to lag the table. Now here they used the image and edited it heavily in order to be able to import it and then put another room off to the side. Images will always paste right to that upper left hand corner. You have no ability to move them. The only thing you can do is put them under a fog of war. Images will also layer, so if you have one that's bigger than the other, the bigger one will show uh, whether or not you want it to. Here you see me using a token as a trap, okay? And I would just go ahead and make my monster, okay? And then I put all my traps, attacks, and effects on it. I usually will make him invisible or hide him in a fog of war, and this way I can very, very easily target my PCs with trap without having to make separate die rolls and compare it to their AC. I can just target them as a monster would, hit, miss, damage, whatever I need to do. All right, let's next go back to the campaign manager and let's show you where to buy uh, tokens and where your repository is. Repository first. Here you have all of your saved characters. I will show you how to do that under uh, the DM tips, tricks, and tools. You have saved characters, you have saved maps, saved adventures, saved in images, as well as public PCs, public maps, and public adventures. Now, that is a subscriber-only feature to be able to grab the public ones. Now go back to the current campaigns and go to the store. Here you have the tiles. You also have tiles for everything you own. You'll is already marked. So you don't accidentally rebuy something. You can see just how many different tiles that they have. All of the basic sets, and I really, really love it. Um, PCs are for PC tokens. If you're not buying pre-generated characters, you are buying the token only. Also, here's the monsters. There is a huge selection of monsters available. Um, 70 plus pages, and you buy those in packs. If you go ahead and you can buy the monsters themselves. Now, when you buy monster tokens, all you're buying is a picture. You have to buy the monster data in order to get the full monsters, and you buy those without their tokens. So you do have to purchase both, but you can purchase just what you need as far as monster data, just what you need as far as tokens. You can buy additional map and adventure storage. You can buy additional repository storage. Um, very, very easy to even to purchase gold while you're right here in the store. I love this table. I love the ease of use. I hope you do too. Happy gaming to you and all your gaming table. Good night.